the genuine article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, here with Inside Jack, and here I'm talking to Dr. Fabio DeLisa, and Dr. DeLisa is a recovering cardiologist, now primarily a biochemist, uh, professor at the University of Padua, and he's an author of a very interesting study that we're publishing that deals with myofibrillar uh, proteins in the mitochondria and, and reactive oxygen species. Uh, Fabio, can you tell us about the study? Yes, uh, we, we got interested in this field through my interest in mitochondria. Mitochondria produce reactive oxygen species, uh, generating oxidative stress, so they do not only produce uh, uh, ATP, but also these toxic intermediates. And uh, when the toxic intermediates rise up, uh, the, there is problem for any given cell, and the link between oxidative stress and cardiac disease is, is well established. We, we know that. But the mechanism linking oxidative stress, so reactive oxygen species, with uh, contractile failure is not so well defined. So we wonder uh, w- uh, whether uh, the contractile machinery, the myofibrillar proteins, uh, are attacked by reactive oxygen species. And we started uh, uh, studying this some seven years ago uh, on rat and mice, and we got evidence of that. And the evidence was uh, uh, that there is a linear relationship between the uh, increase in reactive oxygen species and contractile dysfunction. The more you have these toxic intermediates, the, the less the heart is able to contract. And uh, uh, then uh, the natural thing was to translate uh, this concept to the clinical arena, and we we could do this uh, through the support uh, of uh, our colleague in Australia. So Italy and Australia are very far away, but our friendship made this thing more uh, easy. And uh, uh, we collaborated, and uh, we could demonstrate, and this will be in the, in the article, that also in human failing hearts, there is a linear relationship between the degree of oxidation of myofibrillar proteins, especially, uh, I'm sorry to say these names, tropomyosin and desmin, and uh, the development of uh, uh, contractile failure. Right, and you did this in, in uh, specimens from heart transplants, uh, human heart transplants, a very clever way to use that clinical setting to, to do your studies. Now, having shown this, uh, does that have some implications in terms of biomarkers, potential biomarkers we could use? I really think so. Uh, Obviously, this could be uh, translated in analysis of biopsies because there is no way on sections of the heart to say that uh, there is uh, an increased oxidation. But by performing Western blots on these uh, uh, specimens, you could detect that there is an increased oxidative stress, and then you know that this is related to contractile failure. But it's not only that. We are pursuing the idea that uh, the oxidation that occurs in the cardiomyocyte reflects the oxidation that is in the circulating stream, in the circulating uh, blood. And so we are now trying to uh, model this uh, in uh, experimental animals to find if there is a relationship between uh, oxidative processes in the blood and the oxidative processes in the heart. If this is for real, uh, then we are uh, in good shape because then measuring the oxidative stress in blood, we will know that the heart is suffering. Yes, and it would give us some potential therapeutic targets in understanding this this pathway. I think it could be very valuable. Uh, these, these insights that come from basic science ultimately uh, provide us with our most important clinical tools. Thanks very much for being with us. For Inside Jack, I'm Tony DeMaria.